Danger, Dr. Banfield. The human mind is like a cave. Beyond the light, there are dark passageways and mysterious recesses. I, Dr. Daniel Danfield, have explored those unknown retreats and know their secrets. In a moment, we'll return. Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... Daniel Danfield, authority on crime psychology, has an unhappy faculty for getting himself mixed up in hazardous predicaments because of his astonishing revelations regarding the workings of the criminal mind. As our story opens, we find Dr. Danfield in his office dictating to his pretty young secretary, Rusty Fairfax. It is, therefore, with regret that uh, I'm forced to use the following incident as an example of this type of criminal mind. Miss Fairfax and I had been invited to attend the engagement party of Miss Hazel Humphrey and Count Andre Devigny. Oh, there you are, Danfield. Enjoying yourself? Indeed I am, Mr. Humphrey. It's been a long time since I've seen so many celebrities at one gathering. Well, you notice any criminal types among them? Yes, as a matter of fact, there are quite a few. What? Well, who, for heaven's sakes? It would be hardly discreet for me to single out those among your friends whom I believe have criminal tendencies, Mr. Humphrey. Oh, but look here. You can't just make a sweeping statement like that and then refuse to... I'm sorry, Mr. Humphrey, but unless you can tolerate sweeping statements, you shouldn't ask sweeping questions. Well, I see. I think we'd better understand each other, Mr. Humphrey. I, uh, I strongly suspect that you invited Miss Fairfax and myself to your weekend house party because you're secretly amused by the nature of my work. Really, Dan Field, I... I take my work quite seriously, you know, Mr. Humphrey. I intend to be honest in my opinions also, otherwise I could hardly hope for success. Honesty is the best policy, don't you think? Of course, of course. And now that we've reached an understanding, Miss Fairfax and I would be happy to leave if you feel it. Oh, not at all. Oh, look here, Danfield. Perhaps I owe you an apology. No. No, frequently I run into this sort of thing. It's uh, often necessary to point out to my friends that I'm not an entertainer, but a professional man. Quite, quite. As a matter of fact, Danfield, I'm rather glad you're here. Oh? My wife is wearing her diamond pendant. It's quite valuable, you know. Oh, indeed, I do know. The Humphrey pendant is famous. I understand it's been evaluated at $100,000. Yes, and now that you've mentioned that, uh, well, that there are criminals present... Oh, well, you misunderstood me, Mr. Humphrey. I didn't say there were criminals present. I said there were many people present who possessed criminal tendencies. Well, it amounts to the same thing. All right, Jove, now I am alarmed. I think perhaps I'd better warn Edna and suggest that she... Well, here's a young lady. Yes. Some party, eh, Dan? Oh, hello there, Mr. Humphrey. Uh-huh, hello. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course. You're Miss Fairfax, Manfield's secretary. I'm sorry I didn't... Oh, don't apologize. With this gang, I don't blame you for forgetting the names of half of them. Or do you know them all? No, I'm sorry to say I don't. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I must find out now. What's the matter with him? Am I poison or something? Mr. Humphrey is disturbed over the fact that his wife is wearing her famous diamond pendant, Miss Fairfax. Well, why shouldn't she wear it? What kind of a bang can she get out of owning the thing if she keeps it locked away in a safe all the time? Oh, Miss Fairfax, I'm afraid you'll never understand human nature. Some people enjoy possessing valuable articles, even though they may never see them. Maybe you're right. Maybe I don't know much about human nature, but I know an unhappy bride-to-be when I see one. Oh? And uh, to whom are you referring, Miss Fairfax? Hazel Humphrey. Who else? Hazel Humphrey? The young lady whose engagement is about to be announced? Oh, come, come, Miss Fairfax. Hazel Humphrey is making an excellent match. Who says so? Why, why, everybody. The papers have been full of it. Have they? And how do the papers know how a girl feels deep down in her heart? I haven't the remotest idea how the newspapers happen to know such things, Miss Fairfax. Yet I must confess that they publish facts with an air of assurance. Well, this time they missed the boat. Take a look over there. Over where, Miss Fairfax? Over there near the doorway to the dining room. See that tall, blonde girl talking to the short man with a mustache? Oh, yes. What a gorgeous creature. You would notice that. Well, anyway, that's Hazel Humphrey. And the person she's talking to is Count Andre de Valle. Is it really? Well, well. Does she look happy to you? Mm Mm-hmm. I see what you mean. She doesn't seem to be playing the role of the ecstatic bride-to-be, does she? Oh, well, probably a lover's tiff. Lover's tiff my foot. 
She doesn't want to marry the guy. Her mother's driving her into it because Count Fatso has a title. Oh, Dan, can't you do something? Do something? I? <laughs> come, come, Miss Fairfax. Let's be serious. I am serious. Look, you're supposed to know all there is to know about human nature and human instincts and all that sort of thing. Why don't you get in there and help that poor girl out? Miss Fairfax, must I remind oh, you Oh, yes, that... yes, I know. You're only interested in the criminal mind. All right. It's criminal if you stand to one side and let that poor girl fall into the clutches of that money-grabbing phone. That's quite enough, Miss Fairfax. I'm not conducting an advice to the Lovelorn Bureau. I haven't the faintest interest in whether Miss Humphrey marries Count Devillier or whether she jumps from the Brooklyn Bridge tomorrow at dawn. Now, is that clear? It certainly is. And a lot of other things are clear also, Dr. Daniel Danfield. It's clear that you're stubborn and selfish and that you can't see beyond the end of your nose. Miss Fairfax. It's clear that I was a fool to have ever hoped that someday you might thaw out and act human. Act human? It's clear that I that I think you're you're a prude and that someday I hope you fall in love and, and learn what it's like. <laughs> Ma chérie, tonight you are very, very lovely. Oh. You are like the summer sunset over the ocean. You are Oh, nice. Andre, for heaven's sake, relax. Oh, ma chérie. Now, look, darling, let's get things straight, once and for all. You don't have to put on an act for my benefit. I know you don't love me. Mon Dieu, ma chérie, what is this thing you say? Well, do you? But we, oui, please, you must understand. To me, you are like the summer shower to the parched grass. You are lying. Oh, nuts. Andre, listen, you're a good guy and all that. If you weren't such a little half-baked roly-poly, I could probably go for you. The fact of the matter is, I'm in love with someone else. Ma chérie. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to double-cross you. We've made a deal and it's that. A deal, ma chérie? Sure, my family's got money and you want in, okay. You have a title and my mother and father are willing to pay for it. I'm the goat. But what is this goat? Oh, forget it, darling. Other girls have been sold down the river before. <laughs> Why don't you run along and... Mon Dieu, all this talk of selling goats down the rivers. I, I do not understand. Uh... Please, I have more words to speak. I count Andre, Amy, Pierre, Pavier, hey, have the great love for you. This you must understand. In no other way will I make with the marriage. Oh, that's well. Now that it's settled, leave us forget the double talk and make with the merriment, shall we? We, oui, so long as there is between us the understanding, uh, 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 we are interrupted. Oh, hello, Edwards. What's on your mind? Uh, but beg pardon, miss. There's a gentleman waiting to see you in the library. A gent? T tell him I'll, I'll be right there. <laughs> uh, Andre, darling, you'll have to excuse me for a minute. Well, why don't you go into the dining room and have a sample full of beverages? But these gentlemen... Oh, nobody important, darling. Just an insurance agent who wants to talk to me about our engagement gift. Oh, then perhaps Don't I... bother, darling. I prefer to handle it myself. <laughs> see you later. But, ma chérie, come back. I Andre... Ray. Hello, Hazel. Oh, Ray, why did you come here? Don't you realize what will happen it if It won't you're... make any difference now if I'm seen. No difference? But, Ray, I... I... came to say goodbye, Hazel. Goodbye? Oh, Ray, you mustn't talk like that. You mustn't... Sorry, darling. I've thought it all over. It, it just won't work with us. Oh. It wouldn't be fair to you. Oh, now, stop it, Ray. You don't mean that. You can't mean now, it. Now, listen to me, Hazel. I'd be a louse if I... If I took you away from the things you're used to, from the manner of living oh, that you... Oh, Ray. Ray, we've been all over that before. We've settled it. We agreed that neither of us could be happy without the other. Don't those promises mean anything? I haven't got a nickel, Hazel. I'm your father's gardener. Now, this sort of thing is for storybooks. It doesn't work in real life. It does, it will. Oh, Ray. Don't you realize what you're doing to me? It's only because of you that I've been able to go through with all this engagement business. Tolerate the sentimental mush of that detestable little Frenchman. Devalier is your type. He can give you what you want. He isn't my type. He can't give me what I want. I... Well, I'll not marry him whatever happens. Hazel, you've got to. Have I? Oh, Ray. Have you stopped loving me? Is that it? You know it isn't. I'll never stop loving you. Well, then there's only one answer, darling. We'll have to go through with our plans, because if we don't, I... Well, I'll make a worse mess out of things. Oh, Hazel, do you mean that? Oh, every word. Oh, my darling, I, I hope that's what you'd say. Oh, Ray. Ray. Hazel! Hazel, the idea! Oh, Mother. So this is what's been going on. 
Hazel, I'm ashamed. Oh, just a minute, Mrs. Humphrey. It isn't Hazel's fault. I... That's quite enough, young man. Go back to your quarters at once. Pack your things and get out. No. Ray, you stay here, please. Hazel, how dare you defy me? Well, I'm sorry, Mother. I hoped we could avoid this scene. I hoped it... Well, I hoped it would be all over before you found out. Found out what? I'm not going to marry Count Davier, Mother. Hazel! I'm going to marry Ray. Hazel, are you out of your mind? No, I'm quite sane. I can't help it. It's Ray I love, and it's Ray I'm going to marry. Is it? We'll see about that. Well, Raymond, are you going to obey my orders? I'm sorry, Mrs. Humphrey. Leave this house at once. When I do, I'm taking Hazel with me. Why, you... You bother. Oh, Mother. And you, my own daughter. Is this the way you express your gratitude? After all your father and I have done for you? Giving you every advantage? Sending you to the best schools? Arranging for you to meet the right people? And now this. Oh, Mother, I know I'm grateful for what you've done for me. Only... Well, only sometime I've got to begin living my own life. Oh. Doing things that I think are right. Things that you think are right. Do you think it's right to hold a clandestine meeting with your... your sweetheart at your own engagement party? Do you know how much this party is costing your father and me? No, and I don't care. I didn't want the party and you know it. What was your own doing? I've told you a thousand times I didn't love Count Davier, that I wouldn't marry him. Yet you went ahead planning and scheming, convinced that I'd be carried away with all the glitter and glamour, and... and yield. Well, I won't. Hazel, you should be thankful I didn't embarrass you by not appearing at all. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, this isn't my girl talking. This isn't the child I, I reared with such loving care and... and oh, hope. Mother, stop it. Stop it. The little girl whom I've sheltered and protected... Oh, and... for heaven's sake, Mother. <laughs> stop the drama. Haven't you any feelings? Don't you realize that Ray and I love each other? Love each other? Oh, poppycock. You're not capable of knowing whether you love anyone or not. Love, indeed. What has love got to do with it? When you've an opportunity to marry a man with a title... Just a of... moment, Mrs. Humphrey, please. Well, what do you want? I want to tell you my purpose in coming here tonight. I came to tell Hazel I was going away. What? I came to tell her that you were right, that a marriage between us wouldn't work. I asked her to release me from my promise. Well, then... She refused, Mrs. Humphrey. And I thank heaven I had sense enough to listen. Now that I know what kind of a woman you are, how selfish and, and unfeeling and cruel, <gasps> what? there's nothing could stop me from taking her away. Oh, Ray. You fool. You young, stupid fool. What are you going to live on? The money you make as a gardener. I won't be a gardener forever. If Hazel isn't satisfied with the money I make, I'll get more. I'll get it if I have to steal it. Uh, had I known of the foregoing incidents at the time the diamond pendant was stolen, it would have helped immeasurably in apprehending the criminal. Miss Humphrey and her young man did not leave the party that night. Whether this was out of consideration to the girl's parents or whether they felt that by waiting a few days they could convince Mr. and Mrs. Humphrey of the wisdom of their decision, I did not discover. At any rate, both the young people were present when the robbery occurred. I was sleeping soundly when Mr. Humphrey knocked on my bedroom door. Huh? Oh. Come in. Oh. Oh, it's Mr. Humphrey. Danfield, in heaven's name, get up. Something terrible has happened. Oh, something terrible? My wife's diamond pendant has been stolen. Stolen? Yes, stolen. Good heavens, man, don't you understand what this means? Well, naturally, Mr. Humphrey, the uh, loss of the pendant must mean considerable... It's more than the mere loss of the pendant. Danfield, listen to me. If those diamonds aren't recovered, it will mean my complete financial ruin. I, uh, I don't believe I understand. I had intended to sell the pendant next week. Things have not been going well with me financially. It's been necessary to keep up appearances. Danfield, uh, I suppose this will shock you as it would many people. But the truth is, I'm broke. Hmm. Well, that explains it. Explains what? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, tell me, Mr. Humphrey, this marriage of your daughter to Count Davillier. Davillier has connections. He believes that I'm rich. With the funds I received for the pendant... I could have satisfied my creditors until W.A. put me next to something good. Hmm. This is indeed amazing. Was the was the pendant insured, Mr. Humphrey? Well, no. Uh, 
I was forced to allow the insurance to lapse. Mm-hmm. When did the robbery take place? Sometime in the night. There was a brief shower. It woke Mrs. Humphrey. She lay for a while listening, thinking she'd heard a noise. Presently it stopped raining completely, and she heard the heavy breathing of a man. And then what did she do? Nothing. She lay still, waiting. Apparently the burglar must have thought that she'd gone back to sleep. He crossed to the open window and jumped to the lawn below. That's rather an extraordinary story, Mr. Humphrey. As a matter of fact, I don't believe it. I beg your pardon? I should think you might. I suppose Mrs. Humphrey screamed and aroused the household, demanding everybody's arrest. Why, no. She, she told no one but me. I rather thought it best to keep the thing quiet until you'd had a chance to investigate. Now, look here, Danfield. If you're suggesting that... That, uh, that last statement interests me, Mr. Humphrey. Tell me, did your wife recognize the figure that jumped from the window? Why, no. That is, she, uh... Well, she rather thought at first that it was our gardener, a young man named Raymond Arrow, but she was by no means sure. Ah. What do you mean, ah? Nothing, just, uh, ah. Uh, where is your wife now, Mr. Humphrey? She remained in bed. The experience upset her considerably. I've sent for Dr. Chandler. I see. Uh, now, will you uh, please tell me the time? The time? Why, it's uh, 6.45. Thank you, Mr. Humphrey. If you wake Miss Fairfax and ask her to join me outside in 15 minutes, I think I shall not only be able to identify your thief, but recover your wife's diamond pendant. <laughs> We'll return to Dark Danger, Dr. Danfield, in a moment, but first... It seems to me you were bragging too much when you told Mr. Humphrey you'd recover the pendant for him. Oh, really, Miss Fairfax? Yes, really. How do you know who stole it? And if you did know, what good would it do you? The thief wouldn't be fool enough to leave it lying around where you could pick it up. That's a logical deduction, Miss Fairfax. Well, then I don't see why... Here we are. That, uh, that window up there opens into Mrs. Humphrey's bedroom, doesn't it? Yes. Dan, look. Why, George, two footprints plainly embedded in the soft earth beneath the window. And they're deep enough to have been made by a man jumping from the window above. Yes, indeed they are. Miss Fairfax, look. They're in that leaf that's lying in the right heel mark. Well, what is it? Oh, my mistake. For a moment, I thought the reflection of the sunlight on the water cut from the leaf was Mrs. Humphrey's diamond pendant. Dan Danfield, you're stalling. You didn't expect to find these footprints. You didn't believe that there'd been a burglar in Mrs. Humphrey's bedroom at all. Miss Fairfax. You're not fooling me. When Mr. Humphrey told you the burglar had jumped from the window, you expected to prove he was lying because you didn't think you'd find any footprints, didn't you? Miss Fairfax. Oh, I... Stop calling me Miss Fairfax and admit the truth. For once, you're completely wrong. Miss Fairfax, I'm never wrong. It's high time you realize that. Oh? Well, then, just how are you going to explain these footprints? If you come with me, I'll show you not only the pair of shoes that made those footprints, but the man who owns them. Well, there you are, Danfield, and Miss Fairfax. Come in, come in. Have you apprehended the criminal? Yes, as a matter of fact, we have. It was quite simple, wasn't it, Miss Fairfax? Oh, nothing to it. Of course, I don't know who the criminal is yet. Miss Fairfax, please. I'll do the talking, if you don't mind. Well, you asked me a question. Oh, I say, Danfield, is that a pair of shoes you're carrying? Indeed it is, Mr. Humphrey. Does anyone here recognize them? Well, they're certainly not mine. Naturally, they're not, Edna. They're men's shoes. Where did you get the things, Danfield? They look like a pair of workmen's boots. I believe they are, Mr. Humphrey. Do you recognize them, Miss Humphrey? I... Well, why should I recognize them? Of course not. I've never seen them before in my life. Oh, pardon me, Miss Humphrey, but you sound altogether too definite. I think you've seen these shoes before and on many occasions. They belong to your gardener friend, Mr. Raymond Arrow. Oh. Sure. The gardener man wears shoes, does he? Most anyone would wear shoes, my friend, when he plans to jump to the ground from an upstairs window. I knew it. It was that gardener who stole my pendant. It wasn't. It couldn't have been. So, oh, this gardening man with the cone is also a thief. Ma chérie, at least I can't... Oh, Andre, for pity's sake, be still. They didn't steal the pendant. And this, this Danfield person or anyone else can't prove that he did. Dan, are you going to let her talk to you like that? Miss Fairfax, please. I'm sorry, Miss Humphrey. These shoes belong to Mr. Errol by his own admission. I don't believe it. The design on the rubber heels is identical to the designs on the heels of the imprints beneath your mother's window. Oh, there could be a hundred pairs of shoes of the same design. The mud which Mr. Errol scraped from the shoes is the same in texture as that near the imprint. 
Right, Miss Fairfax? I guess so. Never guess, Miss Fairfax. Be specific. Why should I? You don't pay any attention to Just a moment. Danfield, there's something amiss here. For some reason or other, you're stalling with a lot of nonsensical... Stalling, about... Mr. Humphrey? Yes, stalling. If Errol is guilty, why haven't you... Oh, sir! Uh, what's the matter? Good heavens. Uh, what is wrong? At the window. Who's at the window? He's there. I saw him. He had a gun. What are you talking about? Who has a gun? I saw him. Go after him, It someone. won't be necessary to go after him, Mrs. Humphrey. <sighs> Come in, Mr. Errol. Oh, Ray. Hello, darling. Sorry I had to frighten your mother so. <laughs> Errol, was that you outside the window? Yes, sir, it was. What's the meaning of this? Dr. Danfield, arrest that, that burglar. I haven't the authority to arrest him, even though he were the thief, Mrs. Humphrey. What do you mean, even though he were the thief? He is the thief. You've already proved it. Oh, darling, I knew you didn't do it. Danfield, will you be good enough to explain what this is all about? If given the opportunity, I'll be glad to, Mr. Humphrey. There's no need for any further... Be still, Edna. Well... I think, Mrs. Humphrey, your husband's suggestion is a good one. The more you talk, the worse you make it for yourself. Why, the idea... Ever since your husband told me of the man jumping from your bedroom window, Mrs. Humphrey, I wondered why you didn't scream when you saw it happen. Why? I didn't scream. Yes. You see, there's not one woman in a million who would lie in a bed and watch a strange man prowl about a room and then see him jump from her window without raising her voice by a scream. Oh, nonsense. You'd rather give yourself away, Mrs. Humphrey, when you glimpsed Mr. Errol's face outside the window a moment ago. Well, I... Of course, well, the reason you didn't scream last night when the prowler was in your room is because you knew his identity and knew why he was there. The idea. Edna, is this true? Who was this man? I am Inchel. I shall at once leave. You'll stay right here until we get through with you. Keep your hands off me, corn gardening man. Take it easy, mister. Why don't you challenge him to a duel, Frenchie? Oh, it was Andre who was in Mother's room. Mother and Andre conspired to make it appear as though Ray were a thief. I wouldn't marry him. Oh, Mother, how could you? Edna, is this true? Speak up. Yes. Yes, it's true. I didn't want her to marry Ray. I wanted her to marry Andre. Because... Because he had a title and... And, and a pendant? Where is it? Uh, it's in my room. I... I hid it there so... Everyone would think that Ray had stolen it. Positively, I am insulted. One more minute longer, I will not stay here. I count Andre... Frenchie, and with apologies to the good neighbor policy, here's a little memento that you can take back overseas with you. <laughs> we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield, in a moment, but first... For the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. The details of how this matter was concluded are, of course, unimportant. It is, however, significant that uh, those involved in the conspiracy to jeopardize the reputation of young Mr. Errol were... were... Well, Miss Fairfax? Don't your lecture classes ever get bored, Dr. Danfield? Bored? My lecture classes? <laughs> Come, Miss Fairfax, whatever put that idea into your mind? Because you're always feeding them this double talk about criminal potentialities and the workings of the criminal mind. Well, Miss Fairfax? Why don't you make it a little spicy? Tell them about how Hazel and Ray eloped the next day and the old lady finally broke down and admitted that she didn't want a title anyway. But, Miss Fairfax... Tell them when Ray found out that French he'd swiped his shoes and what he'd used them for, he socked the guy again, which pleased everybody. Miss Fairfax, it seems to and me that... And then tell them how you knew that the old lady was lying. When she gave out with that story about a burglar jumping out of her window. She wasn't lying. Count Devalier did actually jump from the window so that we'd find his footprints. Well, I know that, but it seems to there me... There was merely a discrepancy in Mrs. Humphrey's story which aroused my suspicions. You see, she told her husband that she lay awake until it stopped raining completely. Then she heard a man's breathing, and then she saw him jump from the window. Well? Why, Miss Fairfax, you yourself saw the raindrops on the leaf that we found in the footprints. The sun shone on them, which made me think for a moment we'd found the lost diamonds. For gosh sake... Now, do you understand, Miss Fairfax? Why, sure. If the burglar had jumped from the window after it had stopped raining, there wouldn't be any raindrops in the leaf, would there? Quite right, Miss Fairfax. Now, shall we continue? Oh, let's not. Let's not? Dan, aren't you ever going to learn to be human? Human? Hmm. Miss Fairfax. Uh, Rusty, 
Would you uh, lift your chin just a little bit higher? Yes, yes, that's fine. Now. Wow. How human can a guy get? Miss Fairfax, I uh, see what you mean. 